Hello audience. In this video we're going to finish taking the body apart, or as far apart as we're going to get it, make any repairs on it needed, and start prepping it for paint. Now, as shown earlier, the trim panels on this car were gray vinyl, but what I discovered was the quarter panels, they recovered the originals. So, we have the originals here, which is kind of interesting. The door panels and kick panels were replaced, however. The trim moldings, somebody brush painted them all black at one point, but they would have been gray originally with this interior combination. As you can see, we polished a little bit of the black off of this one, and we discovered the paint on the underside of this. So they were originally gray, and we have a really good example of it. Now while we were taking this apart, we found a few interesting artifacts. Now this one, this is a sticker that was on the door jam. I was going to take a picture of this before I removed it, I don't know why I didn't, but luckily I was able to remove it without destroying it too much. There's this switch that was connected to the windshield wiper, which is to my knowledge, not original. It's got kind of a fancy decorative look to it, though. And this was bolted on under the gas tank, which I think it's a flashlight holder, but I could be wrong. And under the back seat, we found four parade flags, which we have no idea how long they've been there. The current owner didn't know anything about them. I counted, they each have 50 stars, so they're not all that old, but still, somewhat interesting. Now the wood in this car is in surprisingly good condition. I'm tempted to just leave it alone, however, one thing that worries me is the rain gutters were a little too easy to pry off. So that's indicating maybe the wood behind it is not really holding it very well. So, what we plan to do now is just remove the wood, at least the wood inside the roof, and give it a good inspection and replace it if needed, or repair it, whatever it needs. Now replacing the wood in a two-door sedan is fairly cheap and easy compared to some of the other bodies, because these are framed pretty much all in steel. It doesn't have very much wood, and what wood is there is pretty much just for the trim to nail onto. Now, for example, like a four-door sedan or a deluxe Phaeton, those bodies are almost entirely framed in wood. So to replace the wood with those, you pretty much have to take the body completely apart and then reconstruct it, which is not only very expensive, but there's a lot of skilled labor because you got to get the doors to fit again, you got to get everything to function properly. It is asking an awful lot, even for experienced professionals who've done it. So with those cars, even when the wood is kind of rough in them, it's easy to justify just patching it together and leaving it alone. However, just because it can be expensive and difficult to do, that doesn't guarantee that any original wood that happens to be in the car is going to be reusable. So if any structural wood really needs to be replaced, the best thing to do is just acknowledge it needs to be done and do it while the car is as far apart as it's going to get, like right now. Instead of just ignoring it and waiting till after the body's been painted and you're reassembling the car, you're trying to nail the top on and find out the nails aren't holding, because it's a real serious problem then. The header on each side, it's got this strange, it's got a carriage bolt that goes up through it, and then it's got like a nut with a screw head on it. And I have tried and I cannot get this loose. I actually ended up spinning the entire bolt. But looking at it, the header is already starting to fall apart, so we're not going to put this back in anyway, so we're just going to cut it into pieces and get it out that way.
Okay, so come to find out this actually has a hex head on it, so we might be able to remove this without ruining it. Another interesting thing is, as you can see here, there's some kind of uh, sealer that was put on here before the wood was installed. And it was installed before the body was painted, because there's more bare metal here. Now there's several carriage bolts on this that go through this piece of steel all the way through the wood. And all but one of them, once you remove the nut, you can just drop it out from underneath. This one on the door post, you can't because it's got a piece of steel from the body nailed in right under it. So, after thinking about it, what I chose to do is just pry this off and bend it down and I was able to get the carriage bolt out, which is rather strange. And I think I can straighten this back out when I reassemble it. Now removing this piece of wood on the back here is a bit tricky. Now the first thing you have to do is remove this piece here, which has two screws. And then it goes through one of the bolts holding the quarter panel to the back panel. Now this is kind of tricky because of its angle, you can't get a socket on either side. So what I did was I bent this down a little bit and I was able to get a wrench on here to loosen it up. And then I took it out the rest of the way by hand. Then that comes out, and then there's two screws underneath here, and then there's this screw which goes through all the way to the outside of the body, and then it's got a bunch of nails on the other side holding it to the sheet metal, and then after you remove all that it just drops right out. And here's all the wood from the roof. Now, these pieces, which were on the sides of the body, as usual, where they were glued together, they're opening back up again, which is pretty common. And where the nails were, it's starting to crack open all across it. This corner piece here is really falling apart. Still though, for an original car, the wood is in surprisingly good condition, but 
not quite good enough to use. So we've decided we're going to replace everything here. So we ended up removing the back seat frame, which was kind of strange. It's held in on the sides and the back entirely with screws, except up front. It's, it was riveted on and on the sides. Still though, it wasn't too much trouble. Now I can get a better view of the damaged areas. Also gave us a good opportunity to clean this out really good. And now we're going to start patching the sills. Now as you can see, there's a little section missing here and then it's just cracked apart all the way around here. So what we're going to do is weld a plate on top of it. Now this plate is about twice as thick as the sills, so it's going to leave it a lot stronger. On this side, as you can see, it's missing quite a bit more. So we're going to weld a plate on top of it, same as the other side, except we're only running the plate to here, because the seed riser sits on this surface. So we'll have to make another plate to go under here so that it's flush with here. In the previous video, I told you this car was originally black, but after making a few discoveries, that turned out to not be entirely true. So, over here on the front of the body, as we can see, the repaint stops about here, and from here up should be the original paint. Now this is behind the windshield seal, so theoretically it's never had sunlight on it, so it's probably not faded. And just looking at it from here, it looks like it's black. And now we'll give it a good polish and see how it looks. Okay, we went through it in a few areas. There's not much of it left, but as you can see here, it still looks like it's black. So that's why we figured it was originally painted black. And here's that same part out in the sunlight, and it still looks like black. But here's where it gets tricky. And we started removing the paint. We were using acetone on some of it. And when you apply that on it, That's what comes off. Now that is definitely not black. That's blue. So we started looking for sections of the original paint inside the body where it was most likely out of the atmosphere. Like this section, which is under the sill cap. And discovered it's actually a really, really, really dark blue. So we started matching it with the color chips and discovered it's Andalusite blue. So that's what this car originally was. Now that is a really embarrassing mistake on my part. I really should have known better. Anyway, we told the current owner and they've decided that's the color they want to return it to. The good news is we have a really good example of the original paint to match the color to. Now at first we figured there's probably going to be some kind of rust damage on this car. We figured the sills are probably going to need to be patched or something. Well, after taking it apart, the closest thing we could find to any kind of rust was the sills underneath have a little surface rust on them. And that's about it. Everything else is just 
a few layers of paint on top of bare metal. So prepping this thing turned out to be surprisingly easy. What we did was pretty much the same that we did to the four-door sedan. We went over the outside of it with paint remover. That got most of the repaints off. It doesn't work so good with lacquer, so the rest of it we took off with acetone. Then we went over everything with 80 grit sandpaper and it got it really clean and shiny. Now the door posts or the sills, anywhere where the metal was thicker and it had rivets around it, which would be more difficult to sand. We warmed that up with an acetylene torch and then wire brushed everything off of it. I wouldn't try that technique on the sheet metal panels because you could heat warp them really easily. Then once we got everything down to the bare metal, we couldn't really find much wrong with it. There was just a few small dents here and there which were easy to fix and then we started spraying primer on it. Well, that's it for this video. Now, we've ordered new wood for the roof and we're currently waiting for that to show up. Also, the painter is working on matching the original color. So when we get all that, we'll get back to work on this. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.